you're listening to do this first a daily personal development podcast that focuses on science fact actionable steps towards your best year ever hi i'm santa your host today we are on our 93rd day 93 days away from 2025 this podcast episode was originally posted on september 29th so how are your goals coming along as you guys know i'm keeping a running clock on the end of the year can you see the finish line or are you taking the scenic route i hope you answered yes Enjoying yourself while you're on this journey is also important. Finishing strong this year means not burning out and having enough time to unplug. One of the biggest slayers of dreams and relationships for that matter is inflexibility. When you are hyper-focused on dogmatic results, you stifle innovation and creativity which are interdependent keys that bring out the genius in all of us. Don't interpret what I said as a call to throw out your playbook, no. Quite the contrary. Processes, plans, and measured actions are scalable, quantifiable, and necessary engines for growth. However, even the best laid out plans can sometimes not work out as we had intended, and that is why flexibility is important. And that's our focus today. Do you remember Radio Shack? It was established in the 1920s. Radio Shack was the go-to neighborhood store for all things tech. If you wanted to get a great sound system, they had you covered. Maybe you wanted to upgrade your car audio system. Radio Shack was the place. At their peak in the late 1990s, they owned over 8,000 stores across the world and were listed in the New York Stock Exchange. Then Apple iPhones were released in 2007 and moved over a million phones in their first year. The phone could double as a radio, a sound system. You could download apps that could extend and enhance your listening pleasure. By 2011, over 93 million iPhones had been sold and Radio Shack started to decline. As a matter of fact, 2011 was the last year Radio Shack reported a profit, and it was a very menial one. In the end, they were delisted from the New York Stock Exchange, shuttered the majority, if not all, of their stores, and now they exist as an e-commerce site, which means you can only buy online from them. What happened? They failed to remain flexible in their approach. They failed to embrace innovation. They failed to look for ways to add value to their customers. Flexibility is the ability to bend or stretch without breaking. Let me say that again. Flexibility is the ability to bend or stretch without breaking. In a physical sense, It describes a range of motion. Conceptually, which is what we're talking about today, flexibility refers to the capacity to adapt plans or ideas in response to new information or changing circumstances. Do you know a company that is great in adapting and being flexible? Apple. From smartphones to computers, smartwatches and TV programming, Apple has made important pivots at the right time that has solidified their brand name and standing. If you don't believe me, just look at their stock price. They rose from an initial entry into the market at $22 a share to now over $227 a share. Wow. Just like Apple, Netflix, and almost any other company that is consistently successful, we have to remain flexible with our plans because we just don't know what's behind door one. Staying flexible is a science-backed strategy 
that can help you finish strong this year. Flexibility is increasingly recognized as a critical skill in the sciences in both personal and professional contexts, backed by research. In psychology, resilience and the power to persevere is closely linked with being flexible. Flexibility in thinking leads to problem solving and better overall health from a wellness perspective. The ability to switch between thinking about different concepts or to think about multiple concepts simultaneously helps us manage multi-layered and complicated situations. If we look at educational research, we see that studies confirm that students who are flexible do better. Research in educational psychology underlies the importance of teaching strategies that encourages adaptability, such as problem-based learning and collaborative activities. Research supports adaptability as a vital strategy backed by evidence across psychology, organizational behavior, and the neurosciences as well as education. But how can we truly stay flexible when we've made meticulous plans to help us move forward with our goals and in essence, our lives. Here are a couple of strategies that can help. Number one, have a direction, but pay attention to the weather. You may be on your way to Florida for a sunny vacation, but if the weatherman says rain is expected for the next two days, you'll have to make an adjustment to your plans. Maybe you check out Mosey, the restaurants on Armin Circle, the shops at Bar Harbor. Your vacation can still go on. You'll just have to make an adjustment. You can also decide to go to another place with sandy beaches like the Carolinas or Santo Domingo. The point is you don't throw all your plans out. You just make the necessary adjustment. Another strategy that will help you stay flexible is to make a habit of looking at things from different perspectives. There's the most obvious meaning of something that is a product of our past experiences and biases. And then there is everything else. <laughs> There's an old man in the gorilla suit test where groups of people are so hyper-focused on a task that they neglect to see what is right in front of them, the man in a gorilla suit. <laughs> the point is that sometimes we fail to see different ways of approaching viewing and doing things because we are set in our ways and unwilling to see the different possibilities. The way to break out of this limiting type of thinking is to challenge yourself. Question why and why not? Think of all the possible ways to look at a situation. There is the probable, the possible, and the improbable. Challenge yourself and spark your mental curiosity. It's a great way to keep your brain sharp. Promise yourself also not to get disappointed or discouraged, sad or even angry if things don't work out exactly like you thought it would. Most things don't and that's okay. Adaptability or flexibility will keep you moving forward. We do not throw out the baby with the bathwater. Sometimes a person can seriously handicap themselves when they think there is only one road to their dreams and goals and it's just not true. Have you ever worked so hard on something that you couldn't quite figure out just to find out that the answer was there all along right in front of you, but you couldn't see it and then you feel foolish because once you see it, you can't understand how you didn't see it to begin with. Raise your hands because I've been there. That happens when we are married to a process and how we figure things out, often spending more time than needed. One of the ways to break out of inflexibility is by seeking out a variety of resources from a wide spectrum of sources. Echo chambers are not the beacons of inspiration and innovation. When every single person is saying the same exact thing, you become a mimicking parrot. Who wants that? Intellectual curiosity is sparked by challenges, wonder, the extraordinary, or the novel. Finishing strong this year means remaining flexible, especially mentally. When you prioritize flexibility, the bottlenecks and curveballs on your path forward will not thwart you off your path. They are there to gift you knowledge and more tools to help you move forward, but you have to be willing to learn. If you like what you're hearing, don't forget to leave a review. 
You can also read a transcript of this podcast episode and all of my podcast episodes on Do This First dot life, which is my website. And while you're there, sign up for my weekly newsletter, which will help you stay in the loop with all the things I have planned this upcoming year, as well as provide updated and cutting edge research on professional and personal development, brain health, and the neurosciences. And while you're there, you should also listen to all of my other podcasts. You can also follow me on YouTube. My handle there is at do this first. And I'm actually at 9,620 subscribers. Thank you so much. And it's just another way to listen to the podcast. Actually, in a couple of weeks, that channel is going to explode because we're going to have a lot of motivational videos that I'm actually recording right now. So there you go. Tomorrow, we'll continue with our overarching year-end series, Finish Strong. Till tomorrow. Moving past the rain. Champion in you.